Hi, I'm Sherry from Whole Circle Studio, and welcome to the Shoreline Shells Block of the Month and Quilt Sew Along. Today, I'm going to give you some tips as you begin to make your fifth Shoreline Shells Block, an abstract sea urchin. In addition to this video, be sure to refer to the tips included in the pattern, as well as the links to additional video tutorials below. Let's get started. As you're preparing your paper pieces, you'll notice that if you're making a block for the circle layout, all of the paper pieces are single letters, A through T. If you're making a block for the grid layout, the paper pieces are double letters, AA through VV if you're making a block for the grid one layout, or just AA through T, T if you're making a block for the grid two layout. If you're making the grid two layout, you don't need paper pieces U or V, so you don't need pattern pages 19 or 20. Your block will finish as a square measuring 16 and a half inches by 16 and a half inches. In order to achieve the beautiful, irregular, and imperfect organic shapes in this month's shell, there are some tiny sections. Tiny paper piecing may feel a bit intimidating, but if you remember, it's just like paper piecing larger sections, you'll do great. And the payoff is that you'll have beautiful detailed shell and circle features. Even though the fabric pieces and sections are smaller, you'll still paper piece exactly how you did the larger pieces in previous blocks. I have some tips and resources for you to make your paper piecing easier. Be sure to check out, if you haven't already, the tiny foundation paper piecing video. I have a link below this tutorial. Also, because there are quite a number of pieces required for this shell, take your time and cut your fabric pieces efficiently to ensure you don't run out of fabric. After you have your individual paper pieces complete and trimmed to the edge, pay attention to the dots on the paper pieces to assure that you achieve, achieve accurate alignments. Also, be sure to check out, if you haven't already, Block 4 video tips, where I review positioning pinning to help align pieces. I'll have a link to that below. So let's talk about bulk. In order to get detail in our foundation paper piecing, we sometimes need to deal with lots of seams, especially maybe seams overlapping. So let me give you some tips and what helps me. First, I highly recommend um, stitching the paper pieces together slowly so that you could be more accurate. Getting over bulky areas will be easier if you go slow, but also have a fresh, sharp needle. That can really help when sewing or quilting getting through thicker areas. Um, I also recommend playing around with the type of needle you use. I've been using a Microtex needle lately while paper piecing, and I find that that really helps when I'm sewing through bulkier seams. Also, if you have different press types of presser feet for your machine, experiment to see which one is easier to use when you're paper piecing. And that might be different when you're paper piecing thinner seams versus thicker seams. Um, I found that some types are a little bit more pleasant to use for paper piecing than others. Each machine is a little bit different, so just play around to see what works best with what works best for you um, based on what types of feet came with your machine. For this block, I used a seam roller to press along the way when sewing the individual paper pieces. I go back and forth of whether I use a seam roller or an iron to press. It really depends the mood I'm in, if I want to get out of my chair to keep having to use the iron, Using a seam roller is definitely quicker sometimes. Um, I will include a link at the bottom to the brand that I really enjoy using. When joining my paper pieces and then pressing, I then take out the big gun to press my seams. And that is my iron that I can get really, really hot. I really love the a mini iron when paper piecing. I find I have more control and I can kind of just zone in on what I want to press. Um, having an iron that gets really hot, I find is really helpful. I will include a link below to the mini iron that I really enjoy using. I also like to use a wool pressing mat when pressing. All things 
piecing, but especially foundation paper piecing. One of the ways to achieve flatter seams is to press both sides of your fabric, but this is impossible to do when you foundation paper piece um, because the paper is still attached. And never ever press the paper side of your block. Spoiler alert, the ink on your paper will transfer to your iron, making a huge, huge mess. Um, so when you press your iron on a wool pressing mat, the heat is absorbed into the wool. So it's essentially like you're pressing from both sides of the fabric. Um, I find that my seams are flatter for all types of pieces when I use a wool mat. Um, and remember when you are pressing, remember to press. We're not ironing. You want to just kind of put the iron down and leave it and pick it up. Um, your fabric can get distorted and your block can get distorted if you start moving it and ironing. Um, I will include a link below to my favorite wool pressing mat, um, as well as a blog post I did all about using wool pressing mats. Another way to get really flat seams is to use a wooden tailor's clapper with your iron and your wool pressing mat. It sometimes takes a little bit of extra muscle to get those seams to lay flat. Much like the wool pressing mat, the heat from your iron is absorbed into the wood, trapping the heat and steam if you use it, but don't use steam if you're paper piecing. Um, and then that heat will be transferred back into the fabric. So let's take a look um, at what this looks like. When using a clapper, I first go ahead and give my block a good press with my hot iron. Again, the paper is still in here, so I do not want to use any sort of steam. And I'll just go ahead and press down really, really well. And again, when I'm moving the iron, I'm kind of picking it up slightly and dropping it. And then what I'll do is I'll put my wooden clapper on top. I could just leave it there um, since it's pretty hefty, a pretty hefty piece of wood. I don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. Um, I can leave the wood there for a minute or two um, or until the bottom surface of the wood cools and voila, a much flatter seam. So I have this basic tailor's clapper made from a piece of red oak um, and it's sanded down. Um, I have one that measures here approximately 11 inches by three inches by two inches. And this is great for longer seams. Um, I also have another one that's a little bit smaller that's four inches by two inches by two inches. And that's for sort of smaller uh, individual pieces or I can have multiple ones on there at a time. Um, the key, if you're gonna make your own, is that you don't want to seal it. You can definitely sand it and ease the edges, but you wanna keep it natural. Um, if you have a sealer or stain, that might transfer to your fabric and you don't want anything interfering with the heat transfer process. So if you wanna give that a try, um, go ahead and you can make your own. If you do not have access to wood or do not wanna fuss around with making your own, um, there's lots of clappers out there that you can purchase and I'll include some links below. So it's important to press along the way as a reminder while you're foundation paper piecing. Um, but keep in mind that your pieces won't always lay perfectly flat since you still have that paper in the block. Once you remove the paper, you'll then have the opportunity to go ahead and give the block another good press with all of these tools and techniques. Um, the block, this block will probably take you a little bit longer to piece than some of your earlier blocks. I budget a little bit more time. Um, grab your favorite beverage or snack and go slow and steady. Put on your favorite music or show and enjoy the process. And in the end, you'll have a beautiful block to show for it. I can't wait to see your blocks come together. Thank you again for being here and for sewing along with us. I'll be back next month with more tips. If you have any questions or comments or something you'd like me to show in a future video, please let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to share your progress on Instagram using the Shoreline Shells hashtags found on the pattern so we can check out what you're working on. Or I'd love for you to email me photos of your block. My email address can be found in the pattern. See you next month and happy sewing.